Oklahoma's tradition-rich history includes having some of the most highly decorated coaches of all time. With the recent coaching turnover happening, I took a look back and ranked the best coaches in Oklahoma history since 1950. And boy was I in for a treat. We start off with number 10, Howard Schnellenberger. Schnellenberger was Oklahoma's coach for one year, but it sounds like he made it feel like he was going to play a much bigger role in Oklahoma history than he did. This was, after all, a former national title winning coach, and he claimed the books and movies would be made about his time in Norman. Technically, he did make some history, leading Oklahoma to its first losing record in conference play in 31 years, which included a shutout loss to Nebraska, as well as losses to Kansas State, Kansas, and Oklahoma State, the first loss to the Cowboys in 20 years. What made matters worse is he seemed to have no interest in Oklahoma's rich football history, which played a role in alienating him from fans. Just as soon as he appeared, he disappeared, stating, in recent months, a climate has developed towards the program, understandably in some cases, and perhaps unfairly in others, that has changed my outlook on the situation. A change could help improve that climate. My decision has nothing to do with any rules problems because we've been diligently adhering to the rules at OU and throughout our career. The Sooners went 5-5-1 five, five, and one under his tenure. I also found a bunch of other interesting articles written in 1995 about rumors related to Schnellenberger and how he ran the team, but at the end of the day, it just wasn't a great fit for Oklahoma. At number 9, I have John Blake, a former Oklahoma player and staff member for the Sooners under Barry Switzer. He broke barriers and made history becoming the first black head coach at any sport for the Sooners. Unfortunately, Blake coached the worst three-year stretch in OU history going 12 and 22, which included the worst finish in Sooner history in 1996, where the team finished three and eight. Blake's teams never finished higher than fourth in the Big 12 South division, going seven and 17. On the positive side of things, Blake was a pretty great recruiter. He did recruit over half the players that ended up starting for the 2000 national championship team. At number eight, I have Gomer Jones. Jones had the unfortunate task of taking over as head coach after Sooner legend, Bud Wilkinson. Fortunately for him, he had served on Wilkinson's staff as an assistant coach throughout his 17-year tenure, so he was really familiar with the team. Once Wilkinson retired in 64, it was Jones' turn to lead the team, but unfortunately it didn't turn out as well as he may have hoped. The team did make a bowl game his first season, finishing 6-4-1, but unfortunately lost the Gator Bowl to Florida State. Fun fact, a wide receiver by the name of Fred Blintnikoff for Florida State caught four touchdowns that game. You might recognize that name. In his two years as head coach, the Sooners won a combined 9-11-1 before he resigned as head coach but continued serving as OU's athletic director until his passing in 1971. In the seventh spot, I have Jim McKenzie. McKenzie took over the reins of a Sooner squad that had finished the previous year 3-7, which at the time was the worst record in program history. He led a quick turnaround, which included wins over rivals Texas and Nebraska, being named Coach of the Year in the Big 8 Conference, and having the Sooners finish 6-4. Unfortunately, tragedy struck after the season as McKenzie passed away that spring. He played an instrumental role in the turnaround, as the following season Oklahoma went 10-1 and, and finished number 3 in the country. At number 6, we have Gary Gibbs. Gary Gibbs basically grew up in the Oklahoma program, going from linebacker under Barry Switzer to GA, working his way up to linebacker coach, defensive coordinator, and finally head coach following Switzer's exit. Gibbs had the unfortunate task of cleaning up the program image, along with trying to continue the storied success Oklahoma was having despite all the sanctions, which included decreased scholarships and a live television ban. He coached Oklahoma for six years, and the Sooners finished the season ranked in half of them, with an overall record of 44-23-2. The issue most had with Gibbs is that he didn't have much success in big rivalry games going 2-15-1 against Texas, Nebraska, and Colorado. Only so much grace was given regarding the sanctions he had to work through, and he was forced to resign in 1994. Maybe his time in Oklahoma didn't sit well with him because he's now a defensive analyst for Oklahoma State. Number 5 is Lincoln Riley. If you want to skip this part, there's timestamps below, but be sure to like the video because I want to know how many of y'all skipped. Riley was promoted from offensive coordinator to head coach following Bob Stoops announcing his retirement. He was given the keys to a program on the roll, fresh off back-to-back -back Big 12 titles, 11-1 seasons, 
and led by a seasoned quarterback. Riley kept Oklahoma on its winning track, finishing his first three years as coach with 12 win seasons and Big 12 titles, winning a fourth straight Big 12 title the following year. Riley also has the highest win percentage of any coach in Oklahoma history, finishing his time with the Sooners with a record of 55 and 10. Unfortunately, despite the success Riley and his teams had on the field, they were never able to get over the hump, making the college football playoff three times but losing all three games. Riley's teams also slowly regressed each year, culminating in a 2021 season that saw Oklahoma miss the Big 12 title game. Following the final game of the season, Riley decided to leave the program over the strength of a Zoom call and is now well on his way to becoming one of the most hated coaches in the history of the program. Number four is Chuck Fairbanks. Fairbanks was an assistant to Jim McKenzie and shortly after his passing took over as head coach. According to Heisman winner Steve Owens, I think sometimes we forget what a great coach he was because he was sandwiched between some pretty great coaches. Fairbanks led OU to three Big 8 conference titles as well as three top five rankings to end the year. He is also known for installing the wishbone offense which was perfected over the course of his coaching tenure at OU and continued to be utilized by Oklahoma over the next 20 years to dominate the college football landscape. After back-to-back 11-win -back seasons, Fairbanks left the collegiate ranks for the NFL in 1973 to take the head coaching job for the New England Patriots. He finished his career at Oklahoma with a 49-18-1 record. Unfortunately, his time at OU was not free of controversy as the Sooners were forced to forfeit nine games in the 72 season due to recruiting violations related to falsifying transcripts and player benefits, which Fairbanks denied knowledge of. This also made Oklahoma ineligible for bowl games and the UPI National Championship for the two years after he left. This is where it gets tricky, but at number three I have Bob Stoops. Stoops took over the head coaching job at Oklahoma following one of the worst stretches in the history of the program and had a task ahead of him looking to build the Sooners back up. The switch was flipped quickly as Stoops won a national title in only his second year as head coach. He earned the nickname Big Game Bob for his habit of coming up huge in important games early in his career. His Sooners went on to play in three more national title games, unfortunately losing all of them. Despite this, Stoops played an integral role in returning the program to dominance. Over his 18 years as head coach for the Sooners, they finished in the top 10 11 times, won the Big 12 10 times, and won 10 or more games 14 times. Stoops is also the only head coach in the BCS era to have won all four BCS rotational bowl games, the Rose Bowl, Orange Bowl, Fiesta Bowl, and Sugar Bowl. Calling Stoops a program guy would be an understatement. Although he retired in 2017, he returned as an interim coach in 2021 following a sudden coaching change and calmed the waves in Norman. He also currently holds the wins record at OU with 191, also won multiple coaching awards including AP Coach of the Year in 2000 and Big 12 Coach of the Year six times. We've hit on various scandals throughout OU history, so I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the whole Rhett Bomar no-show job fiasco that resulted in a two-year probationary period for the Sooners. You could also argue a knock against Stoops was his near 500 record in bowl games, but there is no question he left the program in a much better position than it started and orchestrated one of the biggest turnarounds in program history. At number two, I have Barry Switzer. Switzer was the assistant coach under Jim McKenzie and Chuck Fairbanks before taking over for Fairbanks when he moved to the NFL. Switzer perfected the wishbone during his time as Oklahoma's offensive coordinator and continued to run it to perfection throughout his coaching tenure. He continued the momentum he had helped build under Fairbanks, beginning his head coaching journey with a bang, winning two titles in his first three years despite dealing with sanctions. His teams were conference champions on 12 occasions, each of those years finishing in the top 10 nationally, and he would go on to win a third national title in the 1985 season. By the end of his tenure at OU, he broke the record for wins of 157, won 8 of his 13 bowl games, and won 10 or more games 10 times. Of course, all good things must come to an end, and the end of Switzer's time at OU was swift. In 1989, Oklahoma was placed on probation due to multiple scandals, including paying players and drug charges within the program. Switzer resigned as coach before the 89 season began. Finally, at number one, I have Bud Wilkinson. Bud Wilkinson is not just one of the greatest coaches in Oklahoma history, but is known as one of the most celebrated coaches of all time. 
He won three national championships in 1950, 55, and 56 over his 17 years as head coach. His team won 13 straight conference titles in 14 out of his 17 years and won 47 straight games from 1953 to 57, which is of course still a record and let's be real, it's never going to get broken. Not to mention this overshadows another big win streak he had, 31 game streak from 1948 to 1950. Dominance would be the best word to describe his time in Oklahoma. 12 straight years without a conference loss, another record that's probably never going to be broken. In fact, his first conference loss didn't happen until his 79th conference game. From 1948 to 1958, OU went 107-8-2. Throughout his career, Wilkinson only had two true down years, 60 and 61, where the team went 3-6-1 and 5-5 and and respectively. Many credit Wilkinson for the rise of Oklahoma football to the powerhouse it's become over the years. Most importantly, he left OU free of controversy. Now I know Sooner fans have strong opinions when it comes to coaches, so let me know what y'all thought in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, it helps me out a bunch. Check out this video here, and as always, have a great day, see y'all the next one.